How about that? Uh, man, it has been a fun summer already. Hats off to Kristen kicking off the summer series two weeks ago. And uh, just awesome, awesome message about Peter. How many even know failure's not final? Your epic failure could lead to an epic future. Come on, that would preach. It was good. Last week, Pastor Dave Devine, one of our overseers, brought a fantastic word talking about the treasure, finding the treasure. My, my little nugget I took away was I'm going to treasure the treasure. I'm going to treasure the treasure. And so if you haven't been with us yet this summer, our summer series is kind of fun because every weekend message is a one-off. There's no series, there's no theme. Every week is something fresh, different, new. And, um, and so I've got a fresh, different, new message for you today. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. ready. Tell your neighbor, you ain't ready. ready. Tell them you better get ready. ready. Tell them I'm ready. ready. All right, I'm ready, I'm ready. Here's the title of my message today. It's following Jesus. Following Jesus. Jesus, following Jesus, to be a disciple of Jesus is to be a follower of Jesus. Here's, here's what I believe. Those of us who are followers of Jesus, we, we believe in the discipleship process, following Jesus becoming more like him, living the way he wants me to live, doing his will, not mine. Um, I'm going where he wants me to go, saying what he wants me to say, serving how he wants me to serve. How many of you know that's the life of a Christian, right? And we get this idea that when we decide to follow Jesus, it becomes sunshine and roses, like the doors open, and the light begins to shine. And every step I take, I know that I am walking in the glory and the goodness and the grace of God. And while that is true fundamentally, it is not always accurate in the natural. It doesn't always feel that way. It doesn't always look that way to our natural minds. In fact, what I would tell you is that discipleship can be pretty disruptive to our lives. Discipleship can be disruptive. Let's, let's look at what I believe is kind of like the cornerstone scripture about following Jesus. The cornerstone scripture about following Jesus, because it's red letters in your Bible. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, in fact, let's just read this out loud together. We don't do this often, but I think it's a good one. It says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. That's loaded, isn't it? Loaded. What a loaded statement by Jesus. You want to be my follower? You must give up your own way. Being a follower is disruptive. It gets in your way. <laughs> Come on. It gets in the way of, of your old way of parenting, your old way of loving, your old way of, of leading people, your old way of responding to frustrating situations, your old way of mindsets and, and habits, and your old it's 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 giving up your old way, your own way, taking up your cross and following me. This discipleship is disruptive. I think. Even in, in my own life, in Kristen and I's life, as followers of Jesus from a very young age, we, we, we were high school sweethearts, fell in love at King's Island, hallelujah, and, and, and nothing, nothing will bring a couple together like a good roller coaster, you know, and, and so we, we, were, we graduated youth group together and high school together, and we, we, we went to college together, and I, she was going to school to be an elementary school teacher. And I went to college to be a PE teacher and a football coach. I, I, we, we had this perfect plan, right? It, I mean, one teacher, the income, hallelujah, how many of you know it could be a little better? Teachers in the house. But two teachers combined, 
plus, you know, summer's off and spring break and Christmas and all. That sounds like a pretty good gig, right? We're just going to enjoy life together. And, and I remember we're about halfway through college. We're just a couple of months away from getting married. Our plans are in place. And I'm in a revival service on a weeknight. Anybody grow up in revival service? Come on. Revival time. And we're there in service. And as the pastor is preaching, I start feeling these feelings in my spirit that like what I was doing, I was not supposed to be doing. I started hearing this little voice say, what if you begin to seek after ministry? What if you begin to step away from coaching, step away from being a teacher? And, and, and maybe God, maybe I'm calling you, Adam, to be a, a pastor, Pastor, I've never, I've never thought of this. This has never been on my brain before. This is nowhere on my radar. But maybe it is, and maybe it is. And 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 by the time that service was over, it was like I am supposed to be a pastor. The problem is, I'm halfway through school. I don't think that all of these, you know, weightlifting classes I've been taking are going to correlate to ministry. I'm about to marry Kristen, who's expecting. To marry a, 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 a teacher and a coach, not a pastor. What do I do about all these things? And it led to all kinds of conversations and, and, and opportunities and then change. And, 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 all, you, and listen, it was, it was fun. It was a ride. It was thrilling. But it was disruptive. It was a change of plans. Discipleship is disruptive. If you want to be a follower of Jesus, you must give up your own way. You must give up your own plans. You must give up the way that you want to respond. You must give up the way that you want to think about things. You must give up uh, uh, habits, behaviors, mindset. You must give up your own way, pick up your cross, and follow Jesus. And follow Jesus. Now, I don't think that there is... There is a Christian in the room who wouldn't say, I want to be a follower of Jesus. It sounds like fun, but it's not always easy. So let's talk about it today. Let's, let's talk about three things about what it means to be a follower. The first one is this. Followers, are you ready? Follow. <laughs> yeah, we're deep out here in the cornfields, baby, out here in Hancock County. Come on, I just keep it simple. You know what I mean? Followers, follow. Followers follow. Let's, let's read some more following scriptures. In fact, Kristen's message two weeks ago sparked this whole thought in my mind when she read the passage in Matthew chapter 4. Let's read it again where Jesus, it says, one day was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. Now, if somebody told you that, you would think you are stupid. You don't fish for people, right? We read it and we're like, come and I will make you fishers of men. Yes, in hindsight. But if you're these people, you're like, I don't even know what that means. And what do they do? And they read it left their nets at once, and they followed him. They left their own way, and they began to follow Jesus. Keep reading. A little farther up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father, Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called them to come too. They immediately followed him, and again, left the boat and their father behind. These, these disciples, the 12, they, they literally are, are leaving behind everything they knew. They're leaving behind their old way, leaving behind their own way to follow Jesus. 
Not knowing exactly where that would go, what it would mean, but they're saying, I'm, wherever you go, God, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do what you say. I'm going to live the way you call me to live. And I just got to celebrate these disciples because oftentimes we, we look down on the disciples for not having enough faith, for squabbling with one another. And Lord, we're going to die out here on this sea of Galilee. Look at the storms. And we look at them as though they're these weak, feeble, faith, faithless men. But in reality, they, they've left everything to follow Jesus. Jesus, right? That's a big deal. That's a big deal. They leave the old behind and they follow Jesus. It's so basic and seemingly simple that it's almost embarrassing that it's the first point. But what I've learned in my own following of Jesus, that, that, that just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy, right? Just because following Jesus is simple, it doesn't mean the following Jesus is easy. Let me just give you one example. Just one example. How about, how about Jesus said that we should treat others the way we want to be treated? We all do that, right? All the time. Simple. Not so easy, is it? I mean, what would our marriages look like if everybody just treated each other the way we wanted to be treated? So quiet in here. What would, what would the sounds be in our households if, if, if our children just treated each other the way they would like to be treated? What, what would our workplaces be like if amongst our coworkers, with our bosses, with our employees, if we just treated each other the way we wanted to be treated? What if when we looked on the poor, we just treated them the way we would want to be treated? What if we just looked, looked around and just treated others like simple not always easy. Why? Because we got this flesh, right? The old way pulls hard, doesn't it? Am I the only one? I mean, the old way pulls hard. Does that mean that the old way is, is good? No. So does that mean the old way is, 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 is uh, we get to wink at the old way? No. Listen, you don't understand, Pastor Adam. I was, I was, it's natural to me. It's natural to me. Can I be honest? It's natural to me to want to lie to cover my rear end. It's natural to me to be greedy and, and keep the bigger piece of pie when the pie is cut and we're handing out the pie. I want the bigger piece. It's natural. It's natural for me. I was born with the desire to do all kinds of things that are not in line with God's will for my life, right? And so just because it's simple, it doesn't mean it's easy. It, it's, it pulls hard. It pulls hard to go the other way. And so what we have to do is we have to choose to follow. It's a choice. Tell your neighbor you gotta choose it. To follow. Following Jesus is a choice. It's not always a feeling. Sometimes, listen, choices lead and feelings follow. Because somebody didn't wake up this morning feeling like coming to church. Somebody woke up this morning not feeling like I want to sing the song out loud today. Somebody woke up not feeling like treating their spouse the way they'd like to be treated. I, I, listen, if I follow my feelings, I'm going to end up in a whole lot of trouble. But how many of you know that's what our world tells us, right? Man, if it, if it feels good, if it feels right, it's natural. Oh, it's natural. You know what? Poison ivy's natural. I'm, I mean, I'm just like, just because it's natural doesn't mean that it's godly. My nature is to be selfish. My nature is to be prideful. My nature is to be greedy, materialistic. My nat I have to fight against my nature. I have to choose to follow. Following is all about obedience. Let's look, let's look, just this one, one scripture. Again, this tug of war, the old and the new, the old and the new. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. This doesn't cover everything, but he's talking to the people about the old way and the new way. And he says, don't you realize, it's Paul. He says, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? They're not followers. They're not followers. They may be fans, but they're not followers. 
He says, don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people. If you want to bounce around in scriptures, go to, um, go to Ephesians. He says, who disobey their parents, <laughs> who are proud, who are boastful. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Now then, I love this. Some of you were once like that. Some of you used to be that way. That's me. That's me. I used to give in to my sexual desires. I used to be greedy. I used to, then the flesh pulls that way. I was born greedy. I was born with a sexual appetite that is not pleasing to God. I was born with these desires. Listen, I was once like that, but you were what? You were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the spirit of our God. What a great place to stop and just thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that I once was like that. The problem is I still live in this flesh, right? So even though I choose to follow Jesus, that flesh pulls hard, right? You go grocery shopping and they got Cosmo at the end of the aisle and two big old things just like, hey, fake, everything, nothing, Woo. Choose to follow Jesus. I ain't going to look at the magazines no more. You know what I mean? Because that's what's natural. But I have to choose what's unnatural. I have to choose to fuel my spirit, not my flesh. All right? So followers follow, and it takes practice, okay? It takes practice to give up my own way to pick up my cross and follow Jesus. But can I tell you, you can do it. You can do it. Tell your neighbor, you can do it. You can do it, it, right? Like, you can do it. (laughs) Followers, follow. I want to be a follower of Jesus. You want to be a follower of Jesus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So followers, follow. The second thing about followers is this. Followers are on the journey. Followers are on the journey. They're on the journey, okay? Jesus, the one that followers follow, he is really into this journey lifestyle. He's always on the go. He's, if you read the gospels, he's always bouncing from one side of the Sea of Galilee to the other side, down to Jerusalem, back up towards Nazareth to Capernaum. He's bouncing all the places. He's always on the go, always on the go, always on the go. And followers are always on the go with Jesus. They're on the journey with, with Jesus. Matthew 8, 19, it says, then one of the teachers of religious law saw him He got excited. He came to a church service. Woo, this Jesus, he can preach. Oh man, Jesus, he just healed that person. That's awesome. Get me some of that. Oh man, when I'm with Jesus, I feel all the feels, right? So he says, I I wanna do like Jesus. I I wanna be like Jesus. And maybe you felt that way before. When you come to church, you think, man, it's something different. Man, I like this. This is good. This this, this place, this real life place, it's a lie. And you go, and he says, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus gives him a heads up and he says, foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests, but the son of man has what? Has no place even to lay his head. No place even to lay his head. He's saying, hey, <laughs> some, you, you come and follow me. That's great. Just so you know, there's people, they live in comfort over here. They got, they got this going on. These people, they got their schedules and got to keep the schedules. And hey, we got commitments to the things and to the stuff. And hey, we've got budgets and we've already planned and we already said where my dollars are gonna go and we got, I got all that kind of stuff. It's easy to do all that stuff, but when you come with me, you don't even know we're gonna sleep tonight. Who knows where we may be going? Who knows what I may ask you to do? Who knows where I may call you to? Who knows what I may ask you to, where I may ask you to begin to serve? Who knows what I may begin to ask you to, to give? Who knows where I may ask you to move and to go? Who knows what, what mission trip I may call you to go on or, 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 or maybe to change career paths or, or maybe the small group to lead. You don't know, but you better stay on your toes if you're going to follow Jesus. You got to be ready because followers are on the journey. 
Jesus never settles in. He's always leading us somewhere new. And here's what I think about discipleship. Here's what I think about following Jesus. We love the destination, but we don't necessarily love the journey. Right? That's natural. We love the destination. Come on, all you country music sinners out there. <laughs> Zach, Zach Johnson, Zach Williams, what's his name? Zach, 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 Zach Brown, right? I got my toes in the water and my rear in the sand. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Not a worry in the world. Cold beer in my hand. That's the dream, isn't it? Right? The destination. We want the beach, baby. You put my toes in, lay back. Come on, just, uh, I'm making fun of country music. If, you, if you're new, I don't think it's all sinful. I just think it's all horrible. It's so, <laughs> that's, what, that's what we want. Ain't nobody writing songs about racing through the airport. My rental car was late. My hotel lost my reservation. Ain't nobody singing songs about that, are they? No, because we want the beach. We want the sun. We want the palm trees. We want the destination. We, want, we don't want the journey. We don't want the journey. But our king, our Lord, he is always moving intentionally, purposefully. And he invites us to much more than just a decision on a Sunday morning and then keep living the same old life. He's saying, come on, I'm on the move. I'm on the go. Follow me. You'll see exciting things happen. Follow me. Listen, where did Jesus heal people when he was on the move? Where did they see the miracles when they followed him? Why do you think the crowds followed him from one side of the sea to the other side of the sea to the other side of the sea? Because they want to see what's he going to do next. What's he going to do next? And he wants to do something new in you. And he wants to do something new through you. And if you just settle in and put your tent pegs in too deep, you're going to miss out. He's saying, come on, follow me, follow me. That's why we say here at Real Life, everybody is on a spiritual journey, a spiritual journey. If you know it, say it with me, to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Everybody's on this journey to know God. Once we know God, we find freedom from our past hurts and habits and hangups. Then we can discover our purpose on the growth track and learn how God shaped me and created me so that I can make a difference. But guess what? That's not a destination. It's a journey and it's a cycle. I am constantly learning more about God. I know God now, but it's amazing how when I open up his word every day, I begin to know him in new and fresh ways. And it's amazing how as I go through life, I get new hurts, new habits, and new hangups. And I need constantly God to work in me, set me free, break me free from this stuff, Lord, not from the old. I'm stepping into the new. And as I walk through life, God has a different purpose for me in different seasons, in different stages of life. You high schooler, listen, God has a purpose for you now on your team, in your classroom, in your neighborhood. And as you get into college, he may have a different purpose for you. He may call you to lead something. He may lead you in a different direction. And when you become married, listen, it's new. And when you have children, it changes some. And when your children move out, wow, it's a new season. What am I going to do with all this time and all this money that I have now? And then I'm going to figure that out. And, I'm, and the New seasons, new purpose. But constantly to, to make a difference. We're on the journey with Jesus. We're on the journey with Jesus. What's he calling you to? I promise he's not calling you to settle in. He's calling you to go. He's calling you to move. He's saying, you follow me? All right, followers follow. And followers get on the journey with Jesus. And the third thing is this. Followers are faithful. Followers are faithful. They're faithful. Let's, I, I want to read a passage of scripture. I'll set it up for you a little bit. Um, Jesus is teaching and he's, he's, he's healing people. He's doing miracles. And how many of you know that, that attracts a crowd, right? You start healing the sick, casting out demons, raising dead people to life. People are going to come and watch. They want to see what's happening next. And so Jesus goes from some of the easy teachings to some harder teaching. That's something I wrestle with as a pastor, by the way. I want to teach all the easy stuff. 
but I'm also called to teach the hard stuff, right? The stuff that makes you go, mm, or the things that make you go, hmm. Right? Like the, the, the hardest of the stuff that calls us out from where we are to something greater, something better. And so Jesus, he, he, he does that in this teaching. All the crowds are there and he goes from the fun, the easy, let me heal you, let me set you free, let me do all these things to some harder teaching. Verse 53 of John chapter six. It says, so Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. Catch this now. I'll think if you're hearing this for the first time. Unless you eat the flesh of the son of man, and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. Excuse me? How many of you, if, if I just told you to listen, I've just done, God's here, presence, awesome, powerful, seeing all the things, miracle, ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. But I just said, by the way, if you want to seal the deal, I'm going to need you to eat my flesh and I'm going to need you to drink my blood. How many of you may respond similarly? He says, anyone who eats my flesh, uh, oh, oh, he says, um, um, drink my blood. You cannot have eternal life within you if you don't. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise that person at the last day. Verse 60, many of his disciples, now this is not the 12, but the disciples, the followers, they've been following, they've been bouncing around with, many of his disciples said, that is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept this? Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining about the fact that they were going to have to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Right? And so he said to them, does this offend you? I don't know what I would think. I don't know that I'm offended. I'm just a little creeped out. At this point, what happens? Many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. They stopped following. And then Jesus turned to the 12 and asked, are you also going to leave? Pause right there. How many followers of Jesus, when they hear a message from God's word that they don't like or don't agree with, that they can't understand, that they don't wrap their mind around, they say, I don't know that I like this. And they turn and they walk away. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're telling me I have to turn from my own way? I like this way. I've been this way my whole life. That's my money. It's my schedule. It's my calendar. Well, these are my desires. If, I, if, 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 I, if it wasn't from God, why, do, why would I have these desires? Well, this is, I was raised this way. Well, listen, I'm Irish. I'm born to be angry. You, you're telling me that, you're telling me I have to change? You're telling me I have to do something hard? You're telling me it's not going to be easy? And I, 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 I don't understand it all the way? And, and Jesus says, all right, <laughs> you 12, you also, are you also going to leave? And Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? Peter isn't saying, I understand everything. Peter's not saying, oh, yeah, no, it makes total sense to me. Eat the flesh, drink the blood. No, I'm good with that. He didn't know. He had no clue what Jesus meant. All he knew was that you have the words that give eternal life. So we believe and we know you are the Holy One of God. To whom would we go? Where else would we go? I, I don't have it all figured out. I, I, I don't understand everything. This part's hard. You calling me to change this in my life? That's hard. It's not easy. I don't like it. I can't even totally wrap my brain around all this. But all I know is you're the Holy One of God. The presence of God that I felt in this place this morning, it's real. It's unlike anything else I've ever felt before. You've given us the words of life. So, so I'm going to follow it. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to strive. 
Am I going to get it all right? No. Am I always going to, am I going to be perfect? No. Am, am, am I always going to execute? No. That's where his grace comes in. That's where his mercy comes in. That's where his love is so, loved you so much that he gave his only son. His mercies are new each morning. Aren't you grateful for that? Great is his faithfulness. You see, followers are faithful. They don't leave. They don't run just because it gets hard, just because it doesn't make sense. Followers are faithful. Even when others desert, followers are faithful. Even when you're calling me to change something, followers are faithful. Even when I don't see the next step, Followers are faithful, even when others hurt me, even when the church hurts me, even when other Christians hurt me. Followers are faithful. Followers are faithful. Fans are fickle. Fans are fickle. And I think we live in a world, especially in a Christian American world, that has a lot of fans and few followers. The church in China, they know what it is to follow because they understand persecution. The church in the Middle East, man, they're followers, they're faithful. There's no fickle there, man. You're in or you are out because you know what's on the line. I'll wrap up with a few thoughts about fans versus followers. Fans want comfort without commitment. Fans want blessings without obedience. Can't have that. Fans want wholeness without holiness. Fans want a crown, but they're not willing to carry a cross. Jesus said, if any of you would follow me, you must deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, I ask right now that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would take what, what could be a, a hard message and that you would apply it to every single heart and life in the way that only you can. In the way that, that, that you need to, to every single individual. You know what people are going through. You know what they're wrestling with. You know, you know the, the hard things that maybe they have not wanted to let go. And so God, I just ask right now that you would come and speak with your grace and with your love, the truth to our hearts. With your heads bowed and with your eyes closed, listen, if you'd say, Pastor Adam, I'm, I'm a, I love Jesus. I've given my life to him and I want to be a follower. Will you just raise your hand right now? Because I just want to pray God's power, God's blessing, God's anointing on you. You say, I want to be a follower. I don't want to be a fan. I want to be a follower. I want to be on the go. I want to be obedient. I want to be wherever he calls me to be. I want to be faithful. I want to live that way. Just put your hand up. Say, yes, yes. I want to be a follower of Jesus. Lord, right now, I come and pray that you would begin to fill your followers with faith. Begin to fill them with strength. Begin to fill them with power. Lord, I pray that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit. Even the disciples, they couldn't do it on their own. You told them to wait in Jerusalem for the gift of the Holy Spirit so that they would be filled with power from on high. Power to be your witnesses everywhere that they go. Lord, I pray that you would fill us with your Spirit. Fill us with your power so that we can be faithful followers of you. Lord, those of us who are wrestling with our old ways, our old minds, 
mindsets, our old hurts, habits, and hangups. Lord, I pray today that we would trust them to you. We would give them to you, that you would set us free, and that you would give us strength to, to live not according to our flesh, but according to your spirit. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. As, as you continue to pray there in your seats, nobody's looking around. If you would say, Adam, today, there is a line drawn in the sand in my heart. I have been sitting in this service and I am not committed to Jesus. I have not been a follower of Jesus. I have lived my way. There is sin, there's stuff in my life. That scripture said that, that the people who live that way, selfishly and boastfully and sexual immorality, all those things, that they would not inherit the kingdom of God. And, and Adam, if I was just being honest with you right now, that's me. If I were to die today, I would not inherit the kingdom of God. But today, I want to change that. I want to become a follower of Jesus. I want to surrender my life to him. Listen, just like those disciples, they didn't have all the answers. They didn't know what it meant to eat his flesh and drink his blood. They didn't know what it meant to be a follower. All they knew was he had the words of life. To where else would they go? So if you're here right now and you say, Adam, I have not been following Jesus. I am not right with God. But today, I want to step across that line. I don't know where else to turn. I'm ready to surrender my life to Jesus. When I count to three, slip your hand up. I'm not going to put you on the spot. Just want to pray with you. One, two, three. That's you. That's you right now. Awesome. Yeah, one, two, both of you guys. Thank you. Down front, praise God. Yeah, awesome. Both of you guys here in the middle. Yeah, man, come on. I see your hand. I'm proud of you best decision you could ever make. If you're watching church online, just click the button right below me. Say, yeah, I'm raising my hand. If that's you today, you're saying, I need to follow Jesus. I'm making that decision. Yes, sir. Yes, young man. I see you. Awesome. Church together. Let's pray this prayer. Nobody prays alone. If you're watching us online, let's pray together. Let's pray dear Jesus. Thank you for this chance to give my life to you. I've lived my way. I have sinned and I need forgiveness. Come into my heart, wash me clean and make me new on the inside. I believe you died for me so that I can live forever. I believe you rose from the dead so that I can have eternal life. From this day forward, I'm following you. Help me to live according to your will and not mine. Give me power over my flesh. Help me to walk according to your spirit. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, church. Let's celebrate. Heaven is rejoicing right now. New life in Christ.